With 17 million followers on Facebook and his own TV channel, Zakir Naik is to many a global superstar. But he's not an actor or an athlete, he's an Islamic preacher. Naik's sermons regularly bring in thousands of adoring fans, and his YouTube videos are so popular, they are channels that even imitate his style, some friendly, some mocking. But he's also a wanted man. Indian authorities accuse Naik of spreading hate speech and inspiring terrorism. The allegations he denies, but they were enough to force him to leave his own country. Today, Naik is living in exile in Malaysia, one of the few nations that agreed to take him in. But India wants him back to face charges. They even asked Interpol to issue an international arrest warrant, but it was rejected for the third time this month. So, is Zakir Naik a radical preacher or just a man promoting his faith? Well, let's talk to Zakir Naik, who joins us from Putrajaya in Malaysia. Good to have you on the program, sir. Um, the Indians essentially want an international arrest warrant. Interpol refused that what they call red corner notice. Do you feel that's a victory for you? I believe that as Allah says in the Quran, very clearly in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, وَقُلْ جَهَالَكْ وَذَاكَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوكَ when truth is hurled again, falsehood, falsehood perishes. And falsehood, it's by its nature bound to press. So this is a victory for truth. And uh, very well the Indian media, the Indian government, uh, the Indian police, they know very well that I'm absolutely innocent. And they are 100% sure that I'm not involved in any act of terrorism. In fact, I'm there to speak against terrorism and to spread peace and harmony throughout the world. Okay. And for your critics, they would say that just because this doesn't meet the international standard for an arrest. It doesn't mean that you haven't said hurtful and troubling things in the past, which we will get to in a moment. But I want to ask you a little bit about Malaysia for now. That's where you are. That's your home. Do you believe that you have the support of Prime Minister Mahathir? I believe I have the support of all truthful uh, people in the world. And Alhamdulillah, I believe that Tun Dr. Mahathir who's the Prime Minister of Malaysia, he's one of the few politicians who has the guts to call a spade a spade. Many of the other Muslims may be aware of the truth, but they're afraid to speak the truth. And Tun Dr. Mahathir, alhamdulillah, he has the guts to call a spade a spade, and he has unequivocally, alhamdulillah, he is completely standing up for the truth. You said unequivocally. I'm going to hang a question mark over that now because I spoke to him this weekend, this past weekend. I asked him, specifically about you. Have a little listen to what he had to say. We have a multiracial, multi-religious population in Malaysia. We don't want anybody who comes up and uh, express extreme views mm -hmm. about race, religion, and uh, about other religions. So to that extent, uh, we cannot uh, ha have him. But on the other hand, it's difficult to send him anywhere else because Many countries do not want to have him. It didn't sound very enthusiastic from Mahathir, essentially suggesting that you do spread things that would cause division in Malaysian society, but nobody else wants to take you, so that's why they have to keep you. Your response to that, sir? I would say that, for example, if a person who is for honesty, fine, those who are for corruption would not like a person who's promoting honesty. So, but natural, I would not be in favor of those people on corruption. So, I'm a person who wants to spread peace, and I'm a person who wants to spread truth. So, those people who do not want peace and truth to prevail in the world, of course, they will differ with me. Just because they differ with me, that does not mean I'm wrong. Mahathir Mohammed is essentially saying he doesn't and support Malaysia you. Malaysia is a multicultural Certainly. society. He says he doesn't support you. He doesn't support you, but he has to keep you. It doesn't sound unequivocal, as I've you mentioned earlier. I've spoken many times. When he spoke to me, he was absolutely unequivocal. Mm. And I feel he support. But you know, sometimes when uh, there are questions asked, so you, you have to choose words. That's what I believe. But I feel I've spoken to him many times, and I feel, alhamdulillah, that, that he, he always supported us with, mashallah. Do you stand by everything you've ever said in the past, whether it's been in terms of videos of you on YouTube, programs on Peace TV, do you absolutely back everything you've said in the past or do you regret some of it or any of it? I say that I stand by almost all the things. 
unless when someone points out that I've made a mistake, then, but naturally, if someone points out very clearly that I've made a mistake, then as a human being, I get I've made a mistake. But as far as my knowledge goes, I would say almost all the things that I've said in the past, I don't regret. Mm -hmm. And almost all the things, almost all, I say that it's right. There may be a few, maybe technical, maybe I might have given some out of the thousands of statistics I give one or two, have me have be having a few maybe flaws, etc. But as a whole, as a whole, mm -hmm. whatever I say. But there are many times that the context have changed. I've said something and a new incident takes place. So that thing, what I said at that time was applicable, may not be applicable after a few years, may not be applicable after about 10 years. So in such situation, what I said in context pertaining to that particular time, I stand by it. Okay. The okay. times may change. Okay. The okay. context may change. Okay. So depending upon the context, it may vary. Okay, so let me then ask you about your comments regarding Osama bin Laden. I'll quote it verbatim for the sake of the audience, right? You said, if bin Laden is fighting enemies of Islam, I am for him. If he is terrorizing America, the terrorist, biggest terrorist, I am with him. Every Muslim should be a terrorist. The thing is that if he is terrorizing the terrorist, he's following Islam. Whether he is or not, I don't know, but you as Muslims know that without checking up, laying allegations is also wrong. So is that something you now regret? Now this statement, first of all, point to be noted, was never shown on the Peace TV, point number one. This statement I've heard later on, I have to check whether it is doctor or not. Because it was not shown it's on, on YouTube. TV. It was the talk that took place on in YouTube. Singapore. Yeah. yeah. It's on YouTube. There are many fake videos available on YouTube. Just because you pick up something on YouTube doesn't mean it's a fact. So did you say and it there are or many videos did you not on say YouTube it? which are fabricated against me? It's available. So this 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 lecture of mine mm. was in 1998 in Singapore during question answer time. Mm. And I remember somebody asked me the question. Now everything verbatim, I cannot watch it is right or wrong. But if you ask me, at that time, this was before 9-11. So before 9-11, when someone asked me the question, not about Osama bin Laden, of any Muslim whatsoever. Mm -hmm. If they ask a question, the Quran clearly states in Surah Hujurat, chapter 49, verse number 6, you first check up the information before you pass it on to the next person. Many a times after that, people have asked me, what are your comments about bin Laden? I said, I have not met him. I have not done research on him. I don't claim that he's a saint. Neither do I claim he's a terrorist. If somebody has done some research, and after doing research, if he says that Osama bin Laden is a terrorist and is responsible for 9-11, he can say that I will not stop him. But no one can force me to say something right. which I have not checked and verified. Okay. I am not a specialist on trying to find out who is a terrorist. So based on that, whenever this question was asked to me, that do you agree Osama bin Laden was a terrorist, I was very unequivocal. He is neither my friend, neither he is my enemy. Mm -hmm. And neither call him a saint, neither do I call him a terrorist. I have not done research on him. Just because I say I don't know, that does not right. mean I'm supporting him. Okay. So this is the media which plays around with words. I'm very unequivocal. Suppose you ask me, how is this person X, Y, Z? I said, I don't know him. Mm -hmm. Just because what the media says, if I'm going to repeat what the media says, then the whole world should call me a terrorist today. Even you should call me a terrorist. Because in the Indian media, I am maligned multiple times more than Osama bin Laden. So just because the Indian media is saying I'm a terrorist and another Muslim or another human being saying just mm. because the Indian media... Yeah, media I don't care about the Indian the media. Certainly, media I'm, I'm trying to... Zaki to be a terrorist. Certainly. Uh, and I think something that we can park you off right now... don't care about now. Indian media? Certainly. We no, don't, no, sorry. I don't understand. We don't, we don't care don't about understand. it. We're, we're trying to... I don't understand. What do you mean by you don't care about Indian media? We're trying to objectively sorry? dive straight into exactly what you said and try to understand why authorities consider you a problem. Trying to understand why you're banned in the UK, banned in Canada, and why the Indian government, not the Indian media, is asking Interpol for an arrest warrant. So from our perspective- Who told you I was banned in Canada? Do you have any document? Do you, ha do you have any document that I'm did banned you, in Canada? Did you try Just to get to- Just because you receive from the newspaper- Okay, but did you try you to go to Canada? I'm in Canada. You do you have allowed. any document that I'm banned in Canada? Did you try to go to Canada, but were not allowed? See, just, be just because a person is refused visa, that does not mean okay. he's banned. 
There okay. are many people in the world who refuse visa to USA and they refuse visa to Canada. So just because the person is refused visa, that does not mean he's banned. Okay. So how I can you say that I'm banned in Canada? Okay. Okay. So, fine. I, I, I'll, I'll put that to rest. You're not banned in Canada. You were just refused a visa. I want to take this to 2016. Forget 1998. Officially, I'm only banned in one country. Officially. Officially just India. Officially, I was only banned right. in UK for three years. Oh, in UK. That's okay. it. Okay, okay. And that three so, years has expired. Okay, so I want to take this further to 2016. So we have this horrible attack in Bangladesh in a cafe where these terrorists, inspired by Daesh, go through the people in a cafe. They spare the people who can recite verses of the Quran, who can show that they are practicing Muslims or at least have some knowledge of the Quran. They hack everybody else to death. One of the attackers was sharing Facebook posts quoting you, including the old Bin Laden quote, right? When that happens, do you understand why people believe that your words could inspire others to commit nasty things in the name of Islam? I believe not a single statement of mine ever has inspired anyone to do any act of violence. If someone misunderstands or takes something out of context, in that question and answer session in Singapore, if we hear the complete answer, I say no one can accuse anyone without proof. And that's the reason I said neither do I support Bin Laden, neither am I against him. Anyone who's fighting against the enemy of Islam, I'm for them and I stand by today also. Even today, mm -hmm. anyone who's against the enemy of Islam, that is submitting the will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm against them. That's it. In that way, I would say I have not inspired a single person. And if you read the article, first time the article that came in the Daily Star, in the Dhaka newspaper, it said that this person, whoever the terrorist was, was a fan of Dr. Zakir Naik. Mm -hmm. Next day, on the 4th of July, 2016, majority of the newspapers started maligning me. Few days after that, Daily Star gave a correction. We never said that Dr. Zakir Naik inspired the terrorist. They made a clarification. So why aren't you, why aren't you speaking in context? Why are you taking only one part of the news and deleting the others? Well, so are you here to trap me and no, to take out part something of out of context? Is to give you, part I would, of the context is to give you the opportunity to I would, I respond. Would say yes. that, I would say that your research your research is not complete. Okay. If you do the complete research, the same only single newspaper reported against me. First July, the attack took place. Third July, 2016, the Daily Star gave an article on me. Fourth of July, majority of right. the Indian newspaper went against me. Okay. Few days later, they gave a correction. Okay. They Can gave I... a correction that we never say that Zakir Naik inspired the terrorist. So when the newspaper I've not said that to you. why do you say that I inspired it? I have not said that Again, to you. Again, one more thing. I'm asking one you. More thing, one more thing. If, if you, you believe read, that your words have no, no consequences. I'm, I'm giving you a real, I'm giving you a real life example not of somebody who, who quotes you and does something terrible afterwards. And I'm asking you, doesn't it perhaps suggest that your I'm words have consequences? I'm saying that is false information. Okay. That, okay, we can put it aside. That is Let's false move on then. Secondly, if Let's you read on. the charge sheet. Let's let me, com let, me move complete. On? let me complete. Okay. If you read the charge sheet, if you read, if you read the charge sheet of the Bangladesh attack, my name is not mentioned. Right. If I was the main inspirer mm. in the Bangladeshi charge sheet when the person was accused of doing terrorism, my name should have been there. It's not there. Right. It is only there in the media. Okay. Again, whenever okay, so, they catch so any for the Muslim sake of our, done a terrorist okay, so for attack, the sake of our many audience, of them have my videos. Okay, so for the sake of our audience, let me then read what the ED, which is responsible for investigating financial crimes in India, says about you. This is the charge sheet against you, right? Forget Bangladesh for, for, for a moment. Um, it was filed under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act in Mumbai, and it says... You use funds from dubious or suspicious sources to purchase property and finance events where you make inflammatory speeches and lectures and you have inspired and incited Muslim youths in India to commit unlawful activities and terrorist acts. His thoughts created disharmony amongst various faiths and created hatred amongst people following different faiths. I'm just going to put that down on the record. But I want to ask you about an analogy that you tend to give and you've given more than once in Q&As, as well as sit-down interviews. When you were asked about Murtads leaving 
the faith of Islam, Muslims who decide to leave the faith. And when you were asked about Christians uh, having the rights or not having the rights in countries such as Saudi Arabia to build churches, you've said, well, if you have a teacher who's teaching in a school that 2 plus 2 equals 5, you wouldn't want to hire that teacher. So that's why in Islam, we don't allow this. You're an intelligent person. I asked you at the beginning of this if you regret some of what you've said before. That's a, that's a very lousy metaphor, isn't it? Comparing it to somebody teaching objective fact, 2 plus 2 equals 4. So implying that anybody who disagrees with you is not basing their views or their facts on reality because you are right and they are wrong. Isn't that the very definition of extremism? Now you're asking me two questions again. The first you read the statement of ED. First I'd like to tell you, 100% whatever the ED say is a big lie. It's an allegation without proof. I have not done money laundering even of a single rupee. It's a big lie and they have not got any proof out of it. That's the reason you are quoting the ED's allegation. Why don't you quote the judgment given by justice uh, uh, of the appellate court, the tribunal of ED, the, uh, the, the justice, the judge of that court, Justice Manmohan, he said that there is no evidence at all that Dr. Zakir Naik is promoting terrorism. I have seen many of his lectures. Mm -hmm. You point out only one statement he said from any of his lectures which promote terrorism and I will attach all his properties. When the ED went to the lower court and they attached my property, we filed a case in the tribunal and Justice Manmohan Singh, his, his words carry thousand times more value than the statement made than okay. ED. But so you mentioned you were not mentioned. Okay, but Why you said you were not mentioned in view? the charge sheet in Bangladesh, so I mentioned no, you in the please, charge please. sheet in India. Please let me speak. That's what I did. Please, please. You mentioned but that you were not you, mentioned in any charge sheet, so I... mentioning charge sheet, why aren't you also mentioning... This is your opportunity to respond. why didn't you mention that? First of all, ED, let me, let, let me clarify you. ED does not file charge sheet at all. You're mistaken. That's a complaint. There's a difference between charge sheet and ED, uh, and, and a complaint. ED cannot file, cannot file charge sheet in my case according to my lawyers. What they did is a complaint. Okay. The media is changing the complaint into a charge sheet. Okay. Even, after, uh, even after ED filed that complaint, the justice of the appellate court, he rebuked it. Okay. He said, You're right. why it's not aren't a charge you going sheet. after it's a the other Babas who have got 10,000 crores? Okay. So it's a complaint. Okay. It's not a charge seat. Two plus two Again, equals five. And one more thing. Okay. Even that complaint was rejected. So that's the reason all this is nothing but allegation. Because when the judge is overruling the complaint, why are right. you quoting the complaint? Okay. If you are a proper journalist and have done a proper study, you should give both sides of the story. Two plus so two equals because five. Because I'm aware of the other side of the story, you cannot give the viewer one side of the story. Two plus two that's equals five. That's coming to your five. first part. So the ED allegation, nothing but fabrication. I have filed all my returns for the last several years till, till 2016 and there was never any inquiry. Now after when they lay this allegation of terrorism on me, when they cannot prove terrorism, mm. they go to hate speech. When they cannot <laughs> prove hate speech, now they are going to terrorism. Okay. Now they are going to money laundering. Two Even plus money two laundering, equals five. there is no proof at all. It's okay. all a fabrication. Dr. Naik, 2 plus Sorry? 2 equals 5. 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 5. Your maths is very poor. If I'm speaking to an interviewer who says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, then I'm wasting my time. I'm sorry. You, I'm you being interviewed use, by the wrong person. I want, you to, I want you to address that. 2 plus 2 is not equal when to 5. You are, when you are asked if people sorry. should not be killed or should be killed for leaving Islam, you said that we would not allow somebody to teach 2 plus 2 equals 5. So you're suggesting that somebody can be no, killed for leaving totally Islam. No, totally wrong. Never. You are, you are mixing... I've you watched the interview. Two answers of I've two watched different the interview. questions. You've said one, this twice. One about sorry? churches. You've said this twice. Once about mm. murtads, people leaving the faith, and secondly, that, and secondly, you've said it separate. about churches Brother. in Muslim-majority countries. Again, your analogy is that this is fundamentally both wrong. Are separate. Both Therefore, are both we cannot allow separate. it. Aren't you Never going to get people killed for this? Aren't you going to get people question. killed for this? Both. You are mixing two answers of mine of two different questions. You gave the same terrible analogy both times. So I'm, I'm asking Never, you. Yes. 
No, not at all. This question on Murtad being killed or not is a different question. Regarding non-Muslims being allowed to preach in majority Muslim country mm. where the Islamic Sharia is followed are two different questions, are two different answers. Okay. You can't join both the answers okay. and give your third, okay, third so you interpretation. Won't answer it. So please won't don't it. merge. Okay, you won't answer it. Okay, so no, I'm going to answer it. But I'm you gonna, haven't. I'm going to answer You've been each and every for three question, minutes here. You haven't you're trying to miss it. I'm going, but first, I have to clarify that both the questions are separate. Yes. We have merged the questions. You've used Never the same analogy the for those together. two things that Both I, the questions are separate. Okay, but I, I clarified these are two Never. very disturbing Never things that you gave the same, the same analogy. analogy. At all. Okay. Yeah, so please, please ask one question at a time, you get a proper reply. If you're going to ask three questions together and then wait for my the reply, analogy? ask one question and reply. You okay. want to take the if if you want to take the interview for 20 minutes, I'm there. If you want to take the interview for one hour, I'm there. I'm okay. not running away. But my please don't merge questions and you want, do don't you throw stand, dead One you question at a time, I will answer it. Do you stand by the analogy of two plus two equals four? The therefore, analogy, anybody yes, who disagrees religiously is saying 2 plus 2 equals 5, therefore we cannot accept it. Please address that, I beg you. My complete answer is when someone asked me the question mm. that why don't in Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia, where the Sharia is followed, why aren't non-Muslims allowed to preach? Mm. So I said that if I am a principal of a school, and or if you are the principal of school, and when you are taking interviews to appoint a teacher of mathematics, one teacher may say 2 plus is equal to 3, one will say 2, two plus is equal to 4, one will say 2 plus is equal to 5. You will surely, because you know maths very well, you will appoint a teacher which says 2 plus is equal to 4. You will not permit a teacher who says 2 plus is equal to 5 to teach in your school because you know maths. Similarly, as far as deen is concerned, as far as religion is concerned, Quran is very clear cut in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19. In Nadina, in the Lail Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. So there is no two doubt about it. So when Islam is the only right religion, and Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 185, that if anyone desires any other religion, any other deen besides Islam, it will never be accepted. Right. So I said that where the Muslim Sharia is followed in the majority of Muslim country, we Muslims know our deen very well. We may not be very good in science and technology. So where it comes to science and technology, we hire doctors and scientists and get them to our country. But where it comes to preaching right. deen, we are very, very right. clear. Please let me complete. Right. Please let me complete. I'm letting you complete. If you don't sir. have time, we stop the interview. I'm, if you have I'm the time, you complete. please give me time to complete. You're, you can ask me. You there. have every opportunity. Please don't interrupt me. You've had so, every opportunity. So the, sure. Go ahead. Let the interview go for five hours, ten hours, no problem. I'm here. So the thing is there, where it comes to deen, we Muslims are hundred percent confirmed. Mm -hmm. You may not be. You may be a Muslim, you may, you may not be knowing your deen well. I know my deen very well. Mm. I know Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran says clearly only religion is Islam. So if anyone comes to preach a religion which is not correct, I will not allow. Right. Similar to analogy, we know maths very well. When we know maths, we will not allow a teacher to teach two plus equal to five. So the analogy is perfect. If you cannot right. understand the analogy, the problem is in your logic, not in my okay. logic. Brother. So is it if, clear? I, if I could... No, do you have any question on clear. this answer? Okay, certainly. If I can extend the analogy and say that Muslims should not be allowed to build masjids, mosques, in Western countries because Western secular democracies don't allow Muslims who are coming to say 3 plus 3 equals 7 because it's different to Western secular democracies. Therefore, Muslims should not be allowed to propagate Islam or build mosques. Would you accept that? If it is mentioned in the constitution of any democratic country that the mosque should not be allowed to be built and they don't allow, they have a right. I don't know of a single constitution anywhere okay. in the world, any democratic country which says that mosque should not be built. So if someone says that, I will fight and see to it that the constitution doesn't prohibit any Muslim to build a mosque. And there is no religion in the world. I am a student of comparative religion. Neither in the Bible, in Christianity, neither in the Vedas, in Hinduism, no religion except Islam is unequivocally clear that Islam is the only right deen. When you read the Bible, there is no statement anywhere in the Bible which says that Christianity is the only correct religion. There is no statement in the Hindu scripture which says Hindu is, Hinduism is the only correct religion. I am a student of comparative religion. If suppose a country is following the Christian law and if the Bible says that no other religion is correct, 
they have a full right to say that Islam cannot be propagated in that country. But I don't know of any such religion. I don't know of any such constitution. You are giving a hypothetical statement that in democracy, if they say 3 plus 3 is equal to 7, in democracy, no one will say that. So what you have to realize, in democracy, you have to follow the constitution, like the constitution of India. So when we go to the court, okay. we say that the politicians are not following the constitution of India. Dr. And Naik. they're breaking the constitution and preventing the Muslim to propagate. Okay, so Dr. Naik, listen, I'm interrupting you now because we're going to lose your satellite window, so I don't want you to fall off the air. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and for clarifying some of this. I've enjoyed this, and I wish you all the best, sir.